Okay, so now I've got my dependencies included and it's time to start writing a test. You could go in here and you could make a new file. You could do that with command N. I can make a Java class, I can make a Kotlin file, I can do all of these things. I'm not gonna do that. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna open main activity. Command Shift O, main activity. I'm in here, I'm gonna put my cursor on main activity. I'm gonna hit Command Shift T. Command Shift T means take me to the test. But if there is no test, then Android Studio gives me the option to create a new test. I'm gonna hit enter on that because that's what I wanna do. Now I get this create test wizard where I can choose a bunch of stuff. So our testing library is gonna be JUnit4, which we saw that we included in the test implementation dependencies. Our class name is going to be main activity test. That's the standard practice for naming your tests is class I'm testing, test. No super class. This is the package that we're targeting. We could include setup and teardown methods if we want to. We're not going to use them for this test, but I'm going to check them so that you can see them. And then we can generate test methods for any of these methods that we want. Now, if I check these boxes, um, Android Studio is not gonna do that much for me. I'm gonna get it, well, and you know what? I'll show you what it does. So let's say that we check, get this time remaining text view app debug thing, click okay. And uh, finally, I choose a destination. It's down between Android test and test. This is a unit test, so I want to put it in test. Cool. Do I want to add the file to Git? Yep, sure. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. So let me click on the imports. So we see that we have some annotations included from JUnit right now. After, before, and test. We see those annotations used here, after, before, test. This is what we get when you, like say you want a test method generated for you. It generates a method with a test annotation on it with like a name, but it doesn't really do more than that for you. And this isn't what I wanna test anyway. What I wanna test for now is my score. So one thing that you'll recall about our application is that when you first start it like this and you haven't started the game yet, you should have a score of zero and you have this text view in the upper left-hand part of the application that says your score zero. Cool, so that's what I wanna test. We could also test time remaining, but testing countdowns and timers in Android is kind of tricky. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you need that overhead right now as you're learning to write your very first tests in Android. So we're gonna stick to the score. So what do I want? I wanna make sure that when my app loads and I get my main activity, my score is zero. And my score text view says, your score colon zero, great. So what might I want to name a test like that? I might wanna name it main activity. And what you're gonna see here is a mix of uh, camel case and underscore. Main activity underscore starts with initial score. Now you might see something like this, this would not be unusual. In this particular case, I tend to not include this main activity on the front because I'm already in the main activity test. And so it's already namespaced to the class that, I'm, uh, that I have this test in. And so I, tend not to put this main activity underscore at the beginning, but you'll see that sometimes. It's not an uncommon convention. But I'm gonna name my test starts with initial score. And I might even say starts with zero initial score to make it super clear what it is. So this is great. Now I need to start doing my setup. Now, Android or iOS or Ruby or Python or whatever programming language you're using, Unit tests have three pieces in common. Given, when, then. So we have to start off with the given. Setting up the circumstances under which we want our application to run. This is where we'll start using RoboElectric. 
Now, in order to use RoboElectric in this test, we need to use a specific test runner for it, which is going to require yet another annotation. That annotation is going to go on top of the class itself. It's called the run with annotation. This is going to allow us to choose which test runner we want to use. You'll notice that similar to Xcode, in Android Studio, if we start typing something, it will try to autocomplete for us with some options. And if we scroll through the options, we see some quick documentation as to what it is that's available. In this case, we see that the run with annotation is, uh, let's see, when a class is annotated with run with or extends a class annotated with run with, JUnit will invoke the class it references to run the tests in that class instead of the runner that's built into JUnit. We added this feature late in development, bunch of director's notes, awesome. Cool. So we're going to use run with, and we're going to use a test runner that's provided by RoboElectric. It's called, unsurprisingly, RoboElectric Test Runner. We're going to indicate that that's a class that we're looking for. Now you'll notice it's red. And the reason it's red is because currently this file doesn't know what that is. And so in this case, it looks like I need to clean and build in order to make it recognize that. This is not uncommon with dependency managers, and Gradle is not an exception. So Sometimes it doesn't necessarily recognize that the dependencies are there when I need them. And so I'm going to clean it and build again to make sure that all of my dependencies are recognized by the project. Now, I don't necessarily remember exactly where uh, the clean thing appears in all of the millions of menus. And so I'm going to look it up in help like this. And I go down to clean project and it tells me that it is in the build menu. And it says clean project right there. So let me go ahead and go to that. Clean in my project. Beautiful. And now you'll notice that RoboElectric Test Runner has a black line underneath it. That black line means that the editor now recognizes that RoboElectric Test Runner has not been imported in this class, but probably needs to be, and it can do it automatically. At this point, there's something that I want to show you about the Android Studio key bindings and all JetBrains key bindings. F2 means take me to the next error in this class. So if you have a whole bunch, you can cruise through them with F2. Right now, you don't have access to that, or you have access to it, but we're not seeing scrolling through a bunch of errors in this file because we only have the one. The other important key binding to know, this is like top five key bindings in JetBrains editors is the intentions key binding. Option enter. I'm going to hit option enter and it's going to automatically import RoboElectric Test Runner for me. Now intentions doesn't always do that. Intentions is sort of a catch-all fix it for me type of key binding. If the editor can figure out what it is that needs to be fixed, the intention will make that available to you in a menu. Or if there's only one thing that could or maybe should be done, then it will do that thing automatically. Intentions are really valuable and can actually help you to start exploring and refactoring in code bases and languages that you don't even know that well yet. So that's why it makes my top five list of key bindings in this editor. Okay, so now I have my RoboElectric test runner. Great, let's go back. We're back in the test now. And so it's time to start setting up the situation that we want. So now we need RoboElectric. We are going to call it like this. And then there's a static method on there called build activity. Now, once again, you'll notice that RoboElectric is red with a black underline. I'm going to hit Option Enter from where I am, and it's going to automatically import that for me. Now I'm going to use the dot trick, same as I used in Xcode to be able to look at what's available to me in there. And I see all the methods that I can call as static methods on RoboElectric. Now, in this case, RoboElectric is accurately guessed that I may want to use build activity. I can see uh, a little bit of information about what build activity does over here on the left 
when I have it selected or like hovered in the menu. Okay, so it creates an activity controller for the given activity class. Good. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do build activity, and then I wanna see, well, it gives you a little tooltip that tells you what the different um, parameters are for this method. You can also hit Command P to get that if it's not coming up automatically, and that's your parameter info in here. Okay, so in this case, I need the activity class, so that's gonna be main activity class. Actually, if I recall correctly, because some of this is backported from Java, it's gonna be like this, main activity colon colon class dot Java. Yep, super weird looking, that's okay. All right, so now I have access to what is called my activity controller. And what that activity controller does is it gives you a handle to control the part of the life cycle that your activity is in right now. So if I hit dot right here, you're gonna see a number of methods and some of them should look familiar to you. Resume, start, create, stop, pause. These are life cycle methods on the Android activity. And so these are what we want to use in order to get our activity into the state that we want it in. Now we're gonna want our activity to be in the created and resumed state. So we're gonna call create, and then we're gonna call resume. Perfect. Now I wanna store that in a variable so that I can get the activity out of it at any time. The way I'm gonna do that is with command option M, extract variable. Whoops, command option V, extract variable. And so now you see that it's created a variable for me and it's uh, allowing me to name that variable whatever I want. It's customary to name this controller or activity controller. Great, so now I have my controller variable. I need to get my activity from the controller. We do that with controller.get. Once again, command option V, let's name this system under test. Awesome, so now we have our activity. So this activity that we get from the RoboElectric Activity Controller allows us to do a lot of the things that we would do on a normal activity. So for example, let's say that I want a specific view. I can say system under test dot find view by ID and then do r dot id and then I have all these options. Game score text view looks like what I want. And I'm gonna cast that to a text view because find view by ID doesn't tell us what kind of view it is. Once again, I have a black line that says I need to import something. Option enter imports it for me automatically. Beautiful. So now I have my given, my when and my then remain. Here is the unfortunate thing about having to hook into the lifecycle method like this, is that the when is sort of already taken care of in this particular case. I want to launch this activity and then I wanna check that something is the initial state. So my when is really happening right here when I create and resume my activity. So given and when are a little bit mixed up in this particular test. Now it's time for me to do my assertions, the then portion of my unit test. So what I wanna do is I wanna assert on the text in my game score text view. And I can do that with assert equals, what do I expect it to be? I want it to be your score zero. And then I wanna get a hold of my text view, so I'm gonna do command option V here, or rather, yeah, command option V. It's going to ask me what the scope of the thing is that I wanna save as a variable. I wanna include the casting to the text view. And this is gonna be score text view. Beautiful. Now, I'm gonna come down to assert equals, 
and include score text view dot text. Beautiful. I want to run this test. Control Shift R. Running, running, running. Instantiating my test. The first test takes a little time to set up sometimes. But then after that, they do tend to run pretty fast. So what's the problem? Resources not found exception with resource ID. Let's see. It seems to think that game score text view is not available which is weird. Let's run it again. All right, well, at least it's not flaky. Resource not found exception with a resource ID of this specific thing. Hmm. Oh. I see the difference. Okay, so this one's an easy thing to miss, uh, clearly, as I even miss it sometimes. And it is that when we build our activity, we have to call all of the relevant lifecycle methods in order to ensure that our view has appeared. So we've created it and we've resumed it. Those methods are both things that we would need to call on a regular activity. But there are also things that are called on activities and fragments throughout Android. And depending on the tasks that we're trying to perform on these Android objects, they might be objects that we are making visible on the screen, or they might be objects that we're running in the background or for whatever reason are not visible. And so we need to explicitly tell RoboElectric we want this thing to be visible. And we do it like this, dot visible.